welcome back to My Own Worst Enemy. We are continuing the playthrough of Midway Solitaire Deluxe. And let's jump right in. Let me grab, see, let me grab the uh, player's aid card, one of the one player's aid card that I have. If you will remember, actually before I begin, before I begin, there was one thing, one mistake I made that was called out in the comments. And again, thank you for leaving comments. I, I really appreciate the uh, the error checking and the errata and catching things that I'm not. And the one thing I didn't catch was when we lost this coastal defense unit in the Aleutians, that also meant that we lost this B-17 bomber because if you'll recall, the coastal defense unit provides this one airbase capacity and it's now zero because that coastal defense unit was eliminated. So we will put this B-17 in the eliminated units box over here, which does suck tremendously for the United States. <laughs> so that's there. And the reason I'm pulling out the uh, card here is because it has the special operations pr marker procedures on here. And we did pull, if you will recall, the reinforcement special marker. So I'm gonna put that down there in the track and we will see what this says. Roll 1d6 and apply the result. Okay, so it's 1 to 2. It looks like a damaged Japanese naval unit in order party will come out of the damaged unit box. We actually have a destroyer in that damaged unit box over there, so that's possible. On a 3, we would randomly pick an eliminated Japanese naval aircraft. Uh, don't think we have any of those yet. And then for 4 and 6, Coastal defense units would be returned, and of course we have none of those out either. So really they've got to roll a one to two here in order to do anything with this reinforcement marker. So let's go ahead and roll. We roll a five, which is the coastal defense replacement. And then it says randomly pick a land aircraft. And yeah, so none of that's happened yet. So it's a non-event in this case. And then of course it says after resolving the reinforcement action, skip remaining segments of the IJN phase and conduct all required segments of the USN and administrative phase. Wow, so actually this is actually good for us because it means that the Japanese will not get a turn. We will go right to the we will go right to the uh, USN G1 sequence of play box. I'm going to leave this marker out. They say to put it away. It goes to the the uh, already played markers, but we'll use it to track through these steps. So good news, good news for us. We go right into G1 here, and we decide what we want to do. So again, we can reorganize a task force, and now might be the time to do something with Task Force 11. We can still create a new task force, but I don't think we need to do that yet. Recruit reinforcement. Enforcements. We have a couple of, we have a bomber, a fighter, and a Navy D to destroyer still. We could replace naval aircraft. We could replace um, land-based aircraft. So we could actually get this B-17 back to Alaska, which may not be a bad idea. And we can also replace a coastal defense unit. So we could put the destroyed Aleutians coastal defense back in the Aleutians. That might be what we want to do. So this is a tough call. I think, you know what I think I want to do? I think I want to, I think I want to reorganize Task Force 11 and perhaps put this carrier, the Saratoga, and this battleship into it. And that would give Task Force 11, it's already got a destroyer, so it would give them a carrier, a battleship, and a destroyer. And then we could send that up to Alaska with the intent of moving on to the Aleutians. I don't have anything right now in the Aleutians. We just lost our coastal defense. And if I put it back, which is something I could do now, if I put it back, I think I'm just going to lose it again. It would buy me one more turn, I think, though. Maybe? I don't know. I mean, this invasion force could land. Although we also have pulled two Aleutian markers already. There are four in the cup, so the odds that we pull another one are low, but it could happen. I'm going to reorganize a task force, though. I'm going to take Task Force 11, let's make sure I do this right, designate one space or USN home base. You may reorganize any task force in that space uh, or home base, reorganize task forces uh, as to any number of type naval units desired, cannot exceed its composition capacity, so we must check that. Well, Task Force 11 can hold four ships. It's got one already. It can certainly have the battleship and the Saratoga added to it, so let's do that. 
we are going to put the battleship and the Saratoga is going to go into task force 11. And that's our action for G1, so we go on to G2. Naval Air Search. Um, I don't think that's necessary here. Seaplane Search. Still, I, I, I don't think that's a necessity here because I can't really do anything in the Illusions anymore. And, of course, the Signals Intelligence again. I'm going to do that one because this will give me an idea. I mean, it's too late now that I've made my decision, but it, it will tell me what's, what's going to happen next turn. So perhaps that will give us some, something to think about for the next USN steps coming up. So let's see. Let's go ahead and pull that operations marker for next turn. And it is... Well, it's like another... Oh, no, it's not. It's... Uh, whoops. Looks like Solomon's is going to be next. I'm going to put that out over here. And so I say Solomon's will be next. Solomon is here... Coming, it's a, the northern part of the Rabool. So these task forces will move advanced onto the, the uh, Solomon's track is what that's saying. Now with that in mind, we go back to, that was G2, and I'm not tracking them here, I should. So that was G2, now we're going into G3. And uh, here, you know, we can also, we can redeploy task forces, which is what I'm looking at. We can also move existing task forces, which is also what I'm looking at. And what I'm thinking is that knowing that the Solomon's line is about to become active, maybe sending, I don't, I still don't think I want to send task force 16 south. I think I'm going to want to keep that at midway, but I could rethink sending task force 11 down towards the Solomons through Samoa here in New Caledonia. It's going to take a while to get there if I do that, though. So, so it would have to come from, and remember the line is here, so it would have to come from the West Coast. There is a battleship in this task force, so it will only be able to move one space per turn, one, one of these um, route lines per turn. In other words, it would be able to go from, it would only be able to get to Pearl Harbor. It would not be able to get to Samoa in one turn, which... Kind of makes me think that that's not the thing to do. Okay, so, and then naval operations. I could also move Task Force 16, 16 towards Midway with, with the, uh, knowing that eventually that line will become active, and that is going to be a problem because if you look at your task, Japanese task forces over here, that's got probably the most powerful one in the game. Historically, rightly so, I should say. So that's an option. And another option is to move Task Force 17 forward. Now, Task Force 17 does not have a battleship. It's got two carriers, the Lexington and the Yorktown, and it has a heavy cruiser and a destroyer. And it's got Fletcher. I could move Task Force 17 to the Solomons. And I think that might be the best thing to do here. And that will be conducted through a naval operation. So step one says select one route. Well, that's the Solomon route. And then move any and all U.S. naval task forces and or independent naval units carrying, or not carrying, using the USN naval movement rule. And that's where they talk about how fast these things can move. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move Task Force 17 to the Solomons. And so that was the movement, and now we are reminded to, um, to pick one incident marker. So let's do that. If I can grab the cup with the incident markers in it. So let's, uh, let's randomly pick our incident marker and see what we get. Hopefully it's something good for us. And it is Incident Surprise. All right, let's see what that is. I've had this before and I cannot remember what that means. So I'm gonna need the rule book for this because it's in the back of the rule book. It tells us what that means. So Incident Surprise. Surprise move is what it says in the rule book. 
If drawn during the Japanese segment, well, it's not. It's drawn within the U.S. segment. So if it's drawn within the U.S. in G3 operation segment, you G3. Wait a minute, aren't we in G2? No, we're in G3. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Maybe I was hoping we were in G2 still. So anyway, you may, uh, it doesn't say you may, well, it does say you may, but it says conduct the following. One, you may move the task force on the active route one additional space. Well, that may not be a bad idea because we could get it up to um, the, the second plotting space here. We get it closer to Rabul. I guess that would be good. I don't know. Or two, it's not, I was just looking, it says you conduct the following, so it's not either or. So we can choose to move that task force in additional space. And it also says increase all USN air unit combat factors on the active route by one for the current segment. Well, I don't think that's going to do us too much good because we're about to hit the end of this turn anyway. So the decision here is, do we want to move the task force, task force 17 up to the second plotting space? What that would do is if the... Japanese task forces come down, it would they would have to stop in that space with our task force sitting there. It will also open task force 17 to potential bombardment from these Japanese forces. I don't know. Do I want to move that forward? Honestly, I think they're within range now of those aircraft anyway, so I'm looking their range is or all four and five, so that's not going to matter. Yeah, let's go ahead and move it up to, let's move it forward to the second space there, the second plotting space. And we do get the plus one. I'm just going to set the marker out aside. We get a plus one combat factor. And I don't know if we'll have an opportunity to use that. So let's continue on and see. We might if the, if the uh, Japanese get to respond to what I do next here. We did the important note, and now we're in step three. Launch any in-range carrier-based, USN carrier-based air units to conduct strikes against spotted task forces and or Japanese island bases. Well, we do have an island base here at Rabul. I could, they got a pretty hefty defense, so let's see. They've got a bomber, two bombers and a fighter, and their anti-air is Five, so that's pretty impressive. I don't know that I want to do that here. Could also provide cap, and this may be what I want to do here, and that's where this plus one combat factor would probably help us. So I reading forward, it looks like so the Japanese do get a chance to react to what I've done here. So they are gonna, I'm sure try to spot that task force. Yeah, they are. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fly cap missions over task force 17. And so going back up to step three, it says naval air units may be launched to provide cap over USN task forces containing carriers. So I do have two carriers, Lexington and Yorktown in 17. So that is Lexington is here, Yorktown is here. So I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is fly Let's see, we've got a TBD, SBD, and a fighter. So I guess the fighters can protect the task force here. So we're going to put, we'll show the Lexington's fighters out. And Yorktown is here. It should be the same, I think. So they have a fighter. So let's have the Lexington and Yorktown fighters are going to fly cap over that task force. And do I want to try to launch those carrier bombers at the um, coastal defense unit? There's what I'm looking at now, and maybe I want to do that, but maybe I don't because, like I said, these task force task forces will be making advancements upon the Solomon's route, and I really would like to have those bombers to attack the uh, those carriers that might be any carriers that might be in there. So I'm not going to, this is probably a mistake, but I'm not going to send my bombers out after their coastal defense unit. I'm just going to have these, I'm going to have these fighters fly cap over the task force, and that is it for now. 
So now we conduct the Japanese reaction, and so there we'll conduct searches with the Japanese base, can go out to three, so that's within range. Japanese carrier strike forces, there's none there. Uh, there's no other task forces there. So it's just gonna be the base. And the base is conducting searches, so using the procedure in G3 for searches, roll 1d6 for each USN task force in range and apply that result. So they've gotta get a one or two to spot task force 17. They get a six, so they do not spot, and that's no effect, they do not spot the task force. Reading on, let's see. They did not spot the task force, so nothing happens there. And then it says for each space containing both Japanese and US units, combat procedure, no, we don't have any combat to worry about, surviving air missions, nope. So that's it for the G3 phase. And I'm gonna take, well, we'll leave that up for now. Let's go ahead and finish the, uh, let's go ahead and go into the logistics. Okay, repair damaged naval units. There are none for the US. Repair damaged naval aircraft. There are none of those. Repair damaged land aircraft. There are none of those. And repair damaged land units. There are none of those. We go into the administrative phase where we flip all spotted task forces back to unspotted. I don't think we have any of those. And then we would take the, the current marker that's in play, put it in the already played box, and move down the next marker. Before I do, I wanna mention one quick thing because I just realized with Task Force 17, I actually had Fletcher with Task Force 17, and he's got that plus one, meaning I really could have moved up to this second space without that special uh, marker that we pulled. So. I kind of forgot about that, but don't don't forget that your leaders, your admirals, can actually give you an extra movement when they're when they're assigned to a task force like that. All right, so that is it for that turn, and we will now go into the next turn. And I'm going to grab the players a chart so we can start all over. So we will we've drawn our operation marker. It is the Solomon's route, and we will go to the IJN search attempt segment which is kind of what we just did. So we're gonna do it again, I think. I don't think I know. So determine if an unspotted USN task force is within. And here it's the same thing. I'll take this incident marker out. Um, the incident marker goes back into the, into the cup. Let's make sure we grab the right cup. And while I'm looking, I also forgot to put the fighters back. So we should have returned the Lexington Fighter Group and the Yorktown Fighter Group. All right, now that I'm done with that housekeeping, back to the game. So we are now in the Solomon's route. So there is going to be a search from the base that's on Rabul. And it's the same thing. We're gonna be rolling for Task Force 17. A one or two will spot uh, yeah. We'll spot the task force. Anything else, it will not be spotted. So we get a two. Uh oh. <laughs> so task force 17 is spotted. So we will flip that to its spotted side. That's, that's not good for us at all. And that was the search segment. Now we will go to the movement segment. First thing we do is move. And I will not forget the incident marker after we do this. But the first thing we do is actually move. Let's do that. And we are on, we'll start with the fourth carrier strike force and we're back to this uh, task force movement table. So we'll roll a D6. That's a five. So for a carrier strike task force, that's two spaces, which will put them at Rabul. I'm gonna put them off to the side here. The invasion force task force is next. Let's see where they go. Or how far they go. They go one, so that's one space. They're being cautious. As well they should be, especially after spotting my task force. And then finally that support task force. Rolls a four, so that is two spaces. So that also gets to Rabul. 
And that is our movement. I'm not marking my, moving my marker here, so let's do that. And nothing left in that to check, so we'll go into the US and Reactions segment. Launch carrier-based bombers and fighters against spotted Japanese task forces and or land bases. Well, again, and it also says I can launch my cap, my uh, cap fighters for cap duty. And again, I've got an opportunity to not see. I don't see these two task forces because I'm not in the same space as they are. So I have not spotted the fourth carrier strike force or that support task force. So the only thing I could do with task force 17 with my bombers is attack the coastal defense at Rabul. And again, I don't, I honestly don't want to risk my bombers against their coastal defense unit. So I'm not going to do that. I think I am going to launch my fighters for cap duty again though. So let's do that. Let's get the Lexington fighter group back up and the Yorktown's fighter group back up. They're gonna fly cap. And if I wanna be doubly sure, I'll put my little cap marker out there. <laughs> All right, so that is the end of the, uh, is that the end of the US? Yeah, because there's no nothing in the Solomons there. So that's all the, all that we could do there, all I wanted to do anyway. So we go back to the Japanese air launch segment. So for spotted U.S. in task forces and bases, and like I said, the Solomon's base is in range. Determine the missions that each available air unit will fly. For each base, task force resolve bomber missions first, then fighter missions, so that's okay. And again, I've got to look at the fourth carrier strike force now and the support strike force to see what's in there, to see what can fly against me. So let's do that, the fourth carrier strike force. What is in the fourth carrier strike force? Looks like the Zoikaku. There is the, um, this is a light, uh, Ryuho, I think it says. Ryuho? Light carrier, that's what it says? Yep. And a destroyer group. So we got a, a carrier, a light carrier, and a destroyer group. And then the support group has <laughs> nothing in it. It has a deception marker. Um, so there's nothing in there. Does that mean I can remove that marker now? Is that what that means? I would think that's exactly what it would mean. Because the only thing in there is a deception marker. So that task force, that support task force is empty. I'm going to take it out and put it in the, I'm going to put it in the eliminated task. You know, I don't know if it's really eliminated because I think I get victory points for that. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure since there was a deception marker in there if that counts as being eliminated. So I'm going to put it upside down because I got a question about that. And if you know the answer, leave a comment because I, I haven't encountered this. I have not encountered a task force with just a deception marker in it. Okay, well, then there's the two carriers to resolve. So we'll start with the Zoikaku and I will grab those two units. We will do the bombers first. And the, who else did I say? The, what does it say? The Ryuho. So that is Ryuho. Where is Ryuho? It's over here. So we'll grab those two. And that is all the aircraft. We will now roll on the air determination table, air mission determination table, which is down here. So starting with um, this bomber, let's do the bombers in order. All right, so starting with the Zoikaku, this is a naval bomber. We will see where it's gonna go. We roll a two, so that is attack task force. Well, that makes sense. So we're gonna put that in the attacking task force wave. And the Ryuho, same table, <laughs> the dice got stuck, rolls a one. That is a no launch, so it must be having problems there. So that's a no launch for the Ryuho bomber. We'll return that to the Ryuho. And now we will see where the fighters are going. 
Zoe Kaku fighter is that last column. Rolls a four. So that's cap. So it's going to provide cap for the fourth carrier strike force. And Ryuho, its fighter is going to also fly cap for the for the uh, fourth carrier strike force. A uh, quick check of our air launch segment. We have determined the missions for that, and now we go into the mutual combat segment. So we'll advance that and move all of our, let's bring our battle marker out because we have a battle around Task Force 17 now. So we will now, let me get that cap marker out of the way. So we will now add our cap duty, let's see, our cap fighters here in the cap box, and then well, let's just leave Task Force 17 marker there with the battle marker. So we'll bring out Task Force 17's naval units, because I think they'll get some anti-aircraft fire here. So there's the Lexington and the Yorktown. The heavy cruiser and the destroyers, or destroyer group. I think that's it. So they're not, we don't bring out the coastal defense because this is all taking place at sea and it's just one bomber. So let me grab the combat chart and let's step through that. We do the air to air step first. We do have that. So it's going to be. Cat fighters may attack attacking fighters and bombers, so the attack factor for both of the fighter groups is three. They have a three air factor, combat air factor power there. And so we're going to roll four hits. They've got to get three or less. I'm going to roll both of these at the same time because they're equal. So they're looking to take out these bombers. Got to go three or less, so that's a six and a two, so that's one hit. on the bomber group. And so let's go ahead and inflict that. It will flip it. And then we move right along to anti-air step. Fire all ground and naval air units combat factors at enemy air units. So we've got, everyone here has a combat, an air combat factor. So we're going to roll four dice. Well, actually, we can only look, we can only roll three first because they're all two or less. So let's do that. Let's do the the carriers and the cruiser have to get a two or less to inflict a hit. So let's do that. There is one more hit, and just for just to be complete, we'll roll the destroyers. Anti-air fire. They also get a hit, so that's going to destroy that bomber group. And I believe that it is eliminated. And it is, so that's gonna eliminate the, let's see, this goes over into um, IJN eliminated units. So they were able to stop that wave from getting to the carriers. And let's put the, let's put everything back. So this is the Lexington's fighter group, Yorktown. Put all of our ships back in the task force with Fletcher, who didn't really have an effect on that. He's only gonna affect movement and range of our bombers. And we'll bring the battle marker back off of the board. That was the mutual return segment. We will go ahead and land the units that were flying cap for carrier strike force four. So let's do that. And now Zoikaku only has fighters. They've lost their bomber, which is good news for us. All right, so that is the return. We will now go to the IJN morale segment. All right, so here we go. The morale segment for each carrier, light carrier, or battleship. I don't think we have any of those. We don't, so we'll move right, go back into the uh, logistics segment here. IJN Logistics. You must check IJN damaged units to see if they have been repaired and returned to play. 
Repair is for base units, reduced land, air units, and carriers, light carriers only. Was... So none of this will apply, and that will take us into the G1 segment for the USN. The G1 segment. Reorganize a task force. Well, we've already done that. Create a new task force. I don't need to do that. Recruit reinforcements, maybe replace naval aircraft, no. Replace land aircraft, mm, I could do that again. And then of course replace the coastal defense unit that's missing in the Aleutians. It is tempting to, what is it tempting to do? Well, I'd really like to get that coastal defense unit back out. I could replace the B-17, I could put it back in Alaska. It, doesn't do a heck of a lot of good though without that coastal defense unit being out there. I am going to actually replace the coastal defense unit. If nothing else, it'll slow down the advance of the Japanese units, I hope. And I could fly a unit, an air unit back into that coastal defense, but I don't think I'm going to do that. But we'll see. So that's G1. Now going into G2, the intelligence. And I'm looking because I could try now to spot the 4th Carrier Strike Force. Or I could pull the marker for next turn. So I could try to spot this task force. I could try to spot now this base is back. But I've got nothing to attack there. So yeah, really the only thing I could do is try to spot this 4th Carrier Strike Force. And if I spot it, then I could potentially try to attack it. I, I could yeah, try to spot the 4th Carrier Strike Force, or I could also, again, try to see, well, let's see. I could also pull another Operations Marker for next turn to see what, what might be coming up. And again, as I think about it, I forgot, I did that last time, and whenever you have Japanese task forces that are on the right side of this defense perimeter line, when you do that, you, you're supposed to flip those to their spotted side it wouldn't have mattered because again i have nothing to attack those with but just keep that in mind don't don't forget that when you do an intelligence signals intelligence that you can in fact flip those task forces to spotted so the question remains do i want to try to spot the fourth carrier strike force and do something about it or do i want to know what may happen next turn i think i'm going to i think we're going to try to spot the fourth carrier strike force so let's do that and so I can do either a naval search or I can do a seaplane search, I think, because I believe that the Solomons, uh, well, I don't, I don't have anything on the Solomons, so never mind. <laughs> so it's got to be, a, it's gotta be a, a, a naval air search. And so let's see, select one, one, unit, one carrier, one battleship or cruiser, and within two spaces, so it's only one space away, and let's see what we get. So we're looking for a one, what does it say? One to four. All task forces will be spotted. So let's see what we get. And we get a, <laughs> we get a five. So that task force is not spotted. I really wanted to spot that task force to try to take it out, do some damage to it. So that was G2. Now we go to G3. And what do I want to do here? Naval operation, land base operation, redeploy task force, or rebase air units. I could move task force 17 forward, but I don't think that's a very smart idea since there is a coastal defense, rather strong coastal defense unit in Rabul, along with the fourth carrier strike force. It would automatically spot the fourth carrier strike force, but I'd have bigger problems at that point, I think. And I'm looking at redeploy task force. I really need now to think about task force 11 sitting over here in the West Coast. I also need to think about task force 16 at Pearl. But I'm not gonna, I'm gonna keep it at Pearl. I'm not gonna move it to the West Coast or so. It's gonna, I'm gonna have to start moving it out. Which would be a naval operation. And like I said, I, uh, that one can actually move two spaces because there's no battleship there. And I really don't know if it's worth it 
I'm really agonizing over what to do with Task Force 11. I don't, I, I kind of want to send it to Alaska and onto the Aleutians, but at the same time, these three routes are, are going to get pounded pretty quickly here. And my main concern being this midway line. Once it becomes active, if depending on how fast it moves, there could be a major problem here. And it would be nice to have another task force with Task Force 16, if that happens. Yeah, so what I'm going to do then, I think I am going to move Task Force 11. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this redeploy to move it to Pearl Harbor. And what that will let me do is it'll give me another turn to think about <laughs> whether I want to send it to Alaska or down to Samoa, depending on what happens. I still have Task Force 8 up there that I could move towards the Aleutians. And frankly, I need to do that, I think, because I've got I still have that problem up there. All right, so that was G3. Now we will go to G4. There's nothing to repair. Repair a damaged land aircraft. Uh, there's nothing damaged. I've got a destroyed one or repair a damaged land unit. Again, there's nothing there. So I don't think I can do anything here. According to the card, there's nothing I can do here. So that is going to take us to the administrative phase. All spotted task forces are flipped to their unspotted sides. So everything is now flipped. And then we take the current operations marker and put it in the play box and that will do it and that's going to do it for this video and so what i've got coming up next is some um, behind the scenes stuff taking place so i've got a new table coming and i'm going to have to take this down to in order to set that new table up now the good thing about the new table is it's going to allow me to have more tabletop space so i can in theory get larger games maybe a monster game who knows uh, we'll talk more about that when I eventually get around to doing my first live chat, which I'm still trying to set up. I'm testing that. So there will be a live chat, hopefully pretty soon, to get your thoughts on a potential monster game that kind of goes on in concert with whatever else I've got going at the time. But that table will let me do that. So what I, what I, either this may be the last turn we see of this game, and if that's okay, let me know in the comments. What I might try doing is relocating the board as as it is without destroying <laughs> without dropping counters all over the floor try to keep the task forces that i haven't seen yet hidden from me maybe set those up somewhere else temporarily and get this reset back up on that new table uh, but i don't know i mean we've seen enough i think to give you a good feel for how this thing plays uh, let me know yeah let me know if you want to see this game finish or if you've seen enough or maybe even just maybe a couple more turns and that's enough i will give my thoughts on the game uh, regardless of what you decide, I am going to come back and do a video where I talk about my thoughts on the game and what I think about it in general. So that's it. As always, thank you for watching. If you would like to support the channel, please consider signing up for the Patreon page. It will help me get things like new cameras, new sound equipment, and hopefully some better lighting in here. All right, I'll see you back here next time.